Without holding back, um, can I first introduce you to uh, Dan Thomas, who is the Youth Development Phase Coach for the under 18s to 16s, well, that should be the other way around, I guess, 16s to 18s at Fulham Football Club Academy. Um, and he will be uh, detailing how performance analysis is used to develop individual players within Fulham Football Club Academy. Dan, over to you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm going to give a little insight on how I use performance analysis as a coach. I've got my glamorous assistant with me, Bezim, who's going to be pressing a space bar. Very important role. So just got a video to, to show, and we're just going to talk through some of the stuff on the video. So my job at Fulham, um, I'm the lead coach for the under-16 team, but also assist with the under-18 team. So just going to give you an insight into some of the stuff we've done with performance analysis uh, over the course of the season. So... At the start of the season, we decided as an under-18 team that we were going to play with a 4-4-2. Uh, we had four strikers in the group. We usually play 4-3-3, but we wanted to play a system that would allow us to have two strikers on the pitch at one time. So we decided we were going to play a 4-4-2 diamond. So part of that, the first part of the process was the um, performance analysis, um, finding clips and finding a model for us to use. So if you just pause it there. He's failed his first job. Performance analysis, you just got to press stop. <laughs> that don't go on my eight minutes, by the way. That's, that's his error. So, yeah, we, um, we looked at quite a few teams. We looked at Man United. Um, we looked at Werder Bremen. We looked at Napoli. We decided that Spurs was, was the best example of a team that played a 4-4-2 diamond really, really effectively last season. So uh, our analysis put through a lot of clips. We spent a lot of hours looking at them in possession, out of possession, in transition. Um, so just some, this is just a clip here of how they played the 4-4-2 diamond. The full-backs, very high, clear diamond, as you can see there. Centre forward's quite narrow. Um, we, we tweaked that a little bit where our under-18 coach wanted the centre forwards to play on the outside. But yeah, we watched a lot of clips of, of Tottenham. Um, I, I was actually a Man United fan, so I thought Man United played the diamond quite well last year. But when you watch it back and watch the clips, they were act actually pretty bad. But they got some lucky results. So. We, uh, we didn't copy the Man United model. So yeah, we, we looked at Spurs, and we looked at a lot of their stuff, and we, we used them as a model for how we played. So we just pause it here. Just sorry, just let it run through a little bit and pause it on the next one. So just then how we used the clips and what we looked at to design practices. And what, what we found that we did a lot was we worked on the centre backs playing through the midfield diamond centrally. We did a lot of that work because we got obsessed with that. We didn't really do much of this type of work. So in this practice, we got the centre back on the ball here, the right back here, and then the midfield diamond. But we're just using this sort of quarter of the pitch or half of the pitch. The goals are still central, but we're just playing from that line along that line. We're using this half of the pitch. So we're really trying to help this right back to make good decisions and work his way up the pitch using the midfield diamond to, to play through teams. And we watched clips from games, spoke to uh, the analysis of the team, and we, we felt we needed to do a lot more of this work. So we did this session a lot where they had to break over this line, then they could play and combine and try and score using the centre forward. So here we've got the number 10, the outside midfield player, combining, playing through, and then delivering across for the centre forward in the box. And that went both ways, so we're going the other way. So just pause it there. So we did it both ways, so we had the right centre-back playing to the right back and through the diamond, the left centre-back playing to the left, center, left back and coming back the other way. So they're getting lots of repetition of passing options uh, in a position that they would play on the pitch. And we had some transfer to, into the games and we had some transfer from the games. So we watch the games, we learn, we think, well, we haven't done enough of this type of work. We do some work in training and Sometimes it comes off in the game, sometimes it doesn't. We weren't saying when you get the ball you have to do this. We were just giving them different options and allowing them to explore different options. And luckily enough, a, a move came off in a game against West Ham. And the foot, the, our 18s are actually top of the league at the moment. And it's quite um, pleasing that a group that haven't really played a diamond before have had some, a lot of success so far uh, playing a diamond. Haven't played Chelsea yet, of course, but we'll see how we go against them. A lot of, Chelsea people in the room, so we'll probably change formation when we play Chelsea and play that uh, back five. So the second thing I wanted to share with you was um, 
I was watching the Liverpool Arsenal game in the other week, and what struck me was the forward runs from uh, Oxley Chamberlain, just constant forward runs. It was obviously something uh, Liverpool had worked on and they talked about, and you just saw him constantly looking to run in behind, looking to run on the blind side of defenders. Uh, obviously, got an assist for the goal and got in a few times. Really interested. The ball went to the right back. He's just running in behind. He's not looking to get on the ball, have it to feet, just looking to run in behind. And it was a constant theme throughout the game. And it just made me reflect a little bit on my own coaching. How many times have I encouraged that midfield player to make that run? How many times have I worked on forward runs as a midfield player off the ball? And I've been at full. So he's done that automatically. That's a sign of a good analyst. <laughs> I didn't. He just stopped it automatically. So keep, very good. Well done. You'll get a round of applause for that at the end. Um, so yeah, reflecting on my own coaching, my own practice. Have you put the foot minutes up yet? By the way, I did, well, I didn't see it. Four minutes. Thank you. So yeah, reflecting on my own coaching, I hadn't done much coaching or designed many practices that really emphasise forward runs from the outside midfield player. So this practice is simple practice, but we've got the outside midfield player there. Just I didn't say go. See, sorry, Pez. Just pause. So we've got a narrow pitch, so a narrow pitch, so we're probably going to have to have more forward runs. We've got two centre-backs, we've got a diamond midfield and one or two forwards for both teams going both ways. And the challenge was just for the midfield players to make forward runs and try and break this line of the mannequins there to try and get in behind on a forward pass and a forward run. And, and the constraint was if they did that and the midfield player scored, he'd get five points. If he did it and got an assist, he'd get three points. So just real simple. But simple practice design to just encourage this type of run from the midfield player. And it, it happened a few times and we had a bit of success in that training session. Again, not the type of practice I'd done a lot or encouraged a lot. So this player here is an under-16 player. His name's Josh. Uh, he's got five weeks to get a scholarship. He's played as a number four a lot. Now we encourage him to play more as a number eight and make these type of runs because it suits his game a little bit more. So if we just pause it there. He's looking to run in behind. So we had, it was interesting on this one because I'd seen Oxlade Chamberlain in the week um, and it had made me think. And we hadn't, re we hadn't really done a practice like this with this boy, but I just spoke to him in the warm up about timing of runs and when to make the run, and particularly on the switch of play across the back four to just look to run in behind. He did it really well in this game. There's two clips here, but there were other clips where he nearly got in to set up a goal. And on, on this one, he let it play. So he gets in on a, on a third man run and clear penalty. Agreed? Everyone who thinks that's a penalty, put your hand up. Everyone who thinks it's a penalty, put your hand up, please. <laughs> Ref didn't give it. No penalty. Look at him. So there, so really that's, that's, really, that's, that's it. It's just some examples of how we've used performance analysis and we've got a really good performance analysis at Fulham. Uh, with the under 18s called Anthony Ross who helped me put this together, um, helped me pull out the clips and helps me to design practices that will help the team improve and play in a 4-4-2 a diamond or help individuals improve to hopefully get towards a scholarship at Fulham. So thank you for your time and thank you to Bezim as well, <laughs> top analyst. Cheers, Dan. Thanks for that. I'll let Andy Myers and Joe Cole know how you're going to set up when we play against you um, in a couple of weeks. Um, I, that was really interesting, and not so much from an individual player perspective, but also from a coach learning perspective as well, how you use it and what was really insightful there around how you connect your learning to help the players learn to then the actual practice and the constraint of the practice as well. So um, that was brilliant. Thank you for that and a great start. Um,